Aloha, I'm Laura Fox, and I'm here with Dr. Robert Young at his ranch. He's the author of The PH Miracle Diet. Thanks for having us today. Oh, are you? I'm always happy to show off the ranch. <laughs> Expose all the beauty that's here. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm also really grateful because you're helping me with my personal path of mm -hmm. trying to lose weight, which I've been basically raw foods for about 12 years now, mm -hmm. with shifting a little bit back and forth to vegan, but never being able to find that sweet spot where I actually mm. lose weight, and actually recently even more been gaining it, and it's like, doesn't matter if I exercise, doesn't matter if I mm. don't exercise, or if I fast, or I eat, or don't eat, or it's just been like, you know, something that drives you can not You can't dangerous. figure out the right uh, combination of what to do. Right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's really quite simple. I, I you know, I, I know there's so many diets out there, uh, and, and with that, there's a tremendous amount of confusion. And there's some basic things that, uh, in order to to be healthy and fit, that I believe one has to consider. And and the first thing is the elimination organs have to be clear and functioning. So if your bowels are not functioning properly, it's really difficult, regardless of what you're eating, to lose weight if you're trying to lose weight. The other thing is the body's always trying to protect the organs that sustain life, particularly the blood. And uh, the blood is the most important organ of the human body. And, and when we eat foods, whether they're raw or uh, plant-based or animal, whatever, you know, it's, it really comes down to how do those foods that we eat and the liquids that we drink impact the quality of the blood. And so as our diets become more acidic, uh, the blood has to maintain its cleanliness, has to maintain its alkalinity, just like the ocean at 8.4. Uh, the blood has to maintain its pH at uh, 7.365 to 7.4. And other organs, unfortunately, glands, uh, are sacrificed to maintain the quality of the blood. Mm. So when we're not properly eliminating our own waste products, they end up in the blood, and the blood has to deal with it and pushes it out into the connective tissues, the uh, the muscles, and, and of course the fat. And and the amount of weight that we have on our bodies in, is in direct relationship to how acidic our lifestyle and diet is. Now, it's not just what you eat; it's also what you're thinking. If you have a lot of stress in your life, that re causes the body to function at a whole, whole different level, a higher level, you're using a tremendous amount of energy and that produces a tremendous amount of waste product. Once again, you're back in the same thing. You could have a perfect diet, but be under tremendous stress and still not be able to lose weight. I also had the thyroid issue. Like like when I first went raw, um, it was we did some tests and there was issues mm -hmm. with the thyroid even at that point. You know, in today's world, I don't know of anyone that doesn't have thyroid issues because mm. uh, the thyroid is, regulates your metabolism, it regulates mm. the body's requirements uh, for energy. Uh, and it uh, will sometimes borrow from Peter to pay Paul mm. in order to keep things going. And so it becomes overstressed, and, and particularly because of things like uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima and mm. the contamination of radioactive iodine now that's contaminated all of our water and it's now in our food that our thyroid uh, is taxed by that and then with the stresses in our life and the acidic food it's it's like one two three and you're out your thyroid just becomes overactive and then after that it burns out and it becomes hypo active and it doesn't function very well uh, but weight loss is not about your thyroid weight loss is all about the blood and your ability to remove the waste products that come from metabolism and from what you eat. If your bowels are functioning properly, that's why some people uh, can lose, uh, eat anything. Mm. Uh, you say, well, how come that person can eat anything and not gain weight? Well, they're eliminating their waste products. Uh, uh, their bowels are functioning properly, and those that have problems with elimination uh, will have problems later in their life with... Uh, retention of acids that are stored in the fatty tissues. So I try to teach people that uh, obesity is not a fat problem, it's an acid problem, and then we, we look at the acidic aspects of our life and start uh, eliminating those acidic contributing factors, and we begin the alkalizing process, then the body can relax and it can start uh, releasing some of the toxicity and uh, and especially when we open up the channels of elimination, and there's four of those. 
You've got defecation, you've got urination, you've got perspiration, you've got respiration. And all four of those areas of the body, which incorporate your kidneys, your bladder, your small and large intestine, uh, your skin, which is the largest elimination organ, and then of course your lungs, if any of those areas are compromised or congested, then you know, you're going to end up you know, building up. I mean, why do we change the filters on our furnace? Mm -hmm. We change them because they build up toxicity and then our furnaces don't function properly. That's true with uh, heating or air conditioning. Uh, why do we change the filters on our car? Uh, because they take in oxygen and build up toxicity and then the engines don't function well. What, what's the question? Did you change your filters? Did you change your oil filter? Did you change your air filter? And of course we don't have disposable air filters uh, but there are ways in which we can keep these organs that are so uh, important for elimination clean. And the ones we don't usually think about maybe are respiration and perspiration as much as we think of the other two. Like in my case, the other yeah. two seem to be going along just fine. Well, so I, like, <laughs> you know, how do you, I guess it's, we're missing, there's a missing link well, somewhere the, in there. Well, the perspiration really comes from exercise. Mm -hmm. So exercise... I'm too tired to exercise. Well, or I'm if you working don't, too much to yeah, yeah, working too much. If you don't take exercise, ex my fingers. Yeah, your fingers are perfectly computer. healthy. They're nice and thin, and and you don't have excess weight on them. That's right. you know, your toes are great. I don't, I don't think you have fat toes. I didn't notice any extra weight on the toes or the fingers. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, those parts of your body that you're using generally aren't going to retain fat unless you're just over stressing those parts of the body and then of course the body protects itself mm. by packing on the pounds but I always try to help people to be grateful for their weight be thankful for it and realize that it's there as the as a protection and it's only in direct proportion to how they're living their life what they're eating what they're drinking and what they're thinking well I, I grew up I mean like literally I was a sugar addict completely like little Debbie's well who was it? ice cream Coke, Doritos. Um, everybody. I, I guess I never fully recovered from that experience, even yeah. going like all raw and doing six week cleanses and yeah. doing all the things that I did. Well, I think it affects, it affects us individually depending on how active we are. I mean, for me, I was eating the same stuff you were mm -hmm. when growing up. Yet you know, I was on the tennis court for six to eight hours a day. Mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was constantly sweating. It's one of the reasons, you know, my hair got thin and I eventually lost it and then I eventually grew, grew it back. But these, these things can, uh, can be problematic. We don't really realize you know, that exercise and keeping the lymphatic system pulling acids out of the tissues and throwing them out through the pores of the skin becomes significantly important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say if you don't take time to exercise, you better make time to die. You know, so, <laughs> I, you that's know. not a choice. I got too much work to do. So, uh, <laughs> so if, uh, if you want to be healthy, you really got to incorporate at least an hour of exercise daily because you, you know, when you circulate, you percolate. When we're tired and or enervated, we just don't seem to have that energy that we want. It's because things aren't circulating. Isn't it interesting that when you're tired and when you start, okay, I'm going to do this, and you you get on your elliptical machine or your bicycle or you go for a walk and you're out about 10 or 15 minutes, all of a sudden that energy starts coming back. Mm -hmm. and that's because you're starting to circulate, and this this is what happens. So. If, I mean, the hardest part of exercise is starting. It, it's, it's true. It's, it's just, okay, you go to the gym, uh, you got all these excuses why you're not going to the gym, so what do you do? You put a gym in your house, and then you got all the excuses why you can't walk <laughs> across the hall, you know, to your own, you know, exercise equipment, you know, because it's there, it's there, you know, and you do that, so, well, I can't get to the gym, so I'm going to put my gym in my home, and then you've got all the excuses there, but... Like I say, the hardest part of exercise is, is the beginning of it. It's just saying, okay, I'm going to do this. I don't feel like doing it. But then when you start, oh, wow, you just kind of get into it. And things start flowing. When I say flowing, the blood flows, the lymphatic flows, you know. And, and I need, like, somebody to text me or something. <laughs> Laura, time to exercise. Time to exercise. <laughs> I need exercise. backup I'll do that. support, will you? <laughs> yes. Well, we, we, we exercise every morning, so I'm, you, you know, this is... A, going. Well, it's a motivation, you know. Uh, they're expecting me to show up, mm. so... I show, oh, because you're not only with your family, but also with your, your people who come to the center. That's right. So mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock, we exercise. We rebound. We stretch. We do yoga. We do calinetics or, uh, uh, you know, static contraction type exercising. 
uh, weightlifting, you know, we'll do that for at least an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, then we'll have breakfast, which we all look forward to after we exercise. Or we'll go for a walk. And I try to do exercise in the morning, I try to do exercise before I go to bed too as well. Uh, but that's even more challenging, you know, to because usually you're kind of winding down. You think, oh boy, I just want to go to bed. It actually doesn't keep you up if you. No, you actually bed? sleep better. Hmm. You really sleep better if you you'll do a little, like forty five minutes to an hour, uh, just before you go to bed. Take a shower, uh, you'll sleep like a baby, you know, just before you go to bed. And and I'm talking about something more cardio. Hmm. I'm not no, talking. I'm not talking thing. doing reps of, of you know try to. You need to do your building in the morning, but you know something cardio, something that improves circulation. You're gonna you're gonna feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. And you know one of the new fangled diseases that medical science has invented because they invent new ones every month it seems like is uh, restless leg syndrome, which you now <laughs> they do ads on TV for. Right, and they try to give you some pharmaceutical yeah, that's drugs just, with all these <clears throat> side effects on it. Yeah, that's just the blood trying to purify itself <laughs> from from excess waste products, acidity, and uh, throws it out into the connective tissues, the muscles, and you end up with cramps or pains or a restless <laughs> leg. You can't seem to relax. But if you'll take an hour, you know, before you go to bed and exercise, take a take a, a warm shower, you'll feel so much better. And and the other thing is just be patient with yourself. Realize that. It took you years to get where you are now. You know, it's not going to take you years. It's only going to take you a few weeks. And so you just have to say, okay, I'm going to dedicate, you know, 12 weeks out of the how many hundreds of weeks you've been alive. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to take a, a season of time here to where I'll dedicate my life to bringing it back to, to where uh, it's, it's now healthy and fit. How much weight do you want to lose? About 50 pounds. Okay, so that should take you, uh, based on the amount of weight that you can lose on the pH Miracle Protocol, which is an average of between one and a half to two pounds a day, should take you probably four to six weeks. That's all? That's it. Well, let's find out. Yeah. Well, what do I have to do? I have to stay on the liquid diet for that long? Yeah, least, liquid green diet. Okay. Uh, the so rules are soup and the smoothie and the... Yeah, the rules are it has to be raw, has to be green has to be liquefied or pureed. Uh, other than that, you can eat as much as you want. has to be low sugar, too. It has to be green. Green, like avocado, <laughs> spinach, celery, cucumbers, broccoli. You can have all that you want, you know, but it has to be pureed. So if you want a salad, you have to puree that. You have to juice it. Or and you no have vinegar, right? No acid, no acetylaldehyde. It breaks down to a neurotoxin, so you'd never mm. want to take vinegar. Hmm. So lemon juice instead. For lemon salad. juice is your substitute for vinegar. But puree, I need, I'm going to drink my salad. You're going to drink it, period. you're going to mix it with your sodium bicarbonate saliva, you know, to raise the alkalinity oh. and... Uh, so uh, don't just gulp it down. No, no, no. Swish it around in your mouth and so chew your liquids. Chew my liquids. That's I had a feeling right. you were going to say that. <laughs> I got his number. I All know right. So uh, I know what to do, right? I just feel so in about <laughs> six weeks you'll uh, be 50 pounds lighter and uh, we can do this again. All right. That sounds perfect. I'll come back and we'll see the results. Oh. Well, it happens just, it'll happen just like I say. And you said an hour in the morning and ideally an hour at night to exercise. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to move your body. Okay. You got to circulate to percolate. Man, if this works, I will, I will give you a great big hug. I'll it's, be so grateful. Oh it, my it's not about if, it's when. <laughs> it's all up to you. It's you, like a whole you, lifetime of struggling with it. And then it's like, it's just that simple. It's like, oh my God. Well, it is. You, you will determine, you will determine your success. I can't determine that for you. But the, the effort that you put into this will be a direct relationship to the to the result. All right. I'm willing. All righty. Great. Five. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.